the afternoon. After a long day of learning and hearing a lot of information, we're going to have a pop quiz. All right, so let's start. You've heard some of this already today. And um, the numbers, you know, we all have like a little twitch difference, but here's the deal. What percentage of North Carolina jobs by 2020 are estimated to require some amount of post-secondary education? All right, if you think the answer is 39%, raise your hand. All right, no takers. 48? 67? Ooh, people are paying attention. 80? All right, so, ooh, it didn't do, no animation? I had a more turn on that animation. <laughs> okay, well, it was 67. So you've heard this, 67% um, uh, will require some post-secondary post education. We are facing a significant skills gap, one that is already evident. Somebody uh, mentioned this earlier today. Um, I have the great privilege of traveling the state often and talking with business leaders um, uh, about early childhood education. And when I did this, even during the height of the recession, I constantly heard that they had jobs they could not fill, and that was because they couldn't find skilled workers to fill them. And it's not just business leaders. Military leaders are struggling. If you've heard me talk, you've heard this before, that 70% of Americans aged 18 through 24 cannot meet the military's eligibility requirements. 70%. Military leaders are so concerned about this that retired generals formed an organization called Mission Readiness to overcome this challenge. It focuses on expanding early childhood investments. They are ahead of the game in recognizing that these challenges are rooted in child development. So it's fair to say that we have um, a skills gap and one that will only grow without action. So we'll see if we have animation now. Um, and again, it's a pop quiz because you've heard some of this um, earlier today. But let's uh, go to it. In 2015, what percent of North Carolina's fourth graders scored at or above proficient in reading on the National Assessment of Educational Progress? This is the nation's report card. It's what allows us to compare how children are doing across states and also provide trend data to look at how our children are doing uh, year after year. All right, who says 38? Who says 45? 57? All right, if only. It's 30, look, the animation works. It's 38, that's it. Okay, what does it look like for high school students? In 2016, um, what percentage of North Carolina's high school students met ACT college readiness benchmarks and reading? 34%, who says? 51. 68. 68. Well, guess what? 34. So just to recap, we anticipate that by 2020, 67% of North Carolina jobs will need some post-secondary education, and only 38% of our fourth graders are proficient readers. So what's the connection? Third grade reading is the single best predictor of future economic, I'm sorry, academic achievement and career success. <laughs> so that's the connection. You need to be a proficient reader. It's an early predictor and warning sign of high school graduation and, and your um, ability to find and, and keep a job. And here's the good news. There is good news in this. We can do this. First, we have got to drop the idea and the possibility that there is a silver bullet. I'm here to tell you, as everyone else is, and the people who've worked long and hard on this issue, no silver bullet. If such a thing existed, I'm fairly certain we'd all be doing it. But why can we do this? What is it that's, why do I say this? As you've heard today, we know more than we ever have about how, children's, how children develop and how their brains develop. We know that during children's earliest years, their experiences are built into their bodies, shaping their brain architecture, and impacting how biological systems develop. Positive early experiences build a strong foundation for learning and future success. In the words of Dr. Uh, Dr. Jack Shonkoff from Harvard Center for the develop on the developing child, we heard from Dr. Fox earlier, brains are built, not born. 
And I think that is the most important message. If folks who are new to this league today with nothing else, that's the key message. Brains are built and not born. And research tells us that children have the best opportunity to have a strong foundation learn for learning and to be on track um, by third grade when health and development is on track beginning at birth. They live in supported and supported families and communities, and they have high quality birth to eight learning environments <laughs> with regular attendance. So paraphrase, um, our, we are fortunate to have as a very esteemed board member, Dr. Marion Earls, we cannot separate the head from the rest of the body. So there's no silver bullet in there, and yet we know what it takes um, to make progress. I don't need that, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it won't be the last one I do. Okay, so what do we do with all this information we've heard today? What do you do with all that you've learned? Where do we start? So, I want to say we start by building on what North Carolina does well. North Carolina has a proud, an incredibly proud history of innovation and success. And we have so much to be proud of when it comes to educating young children. We were the first state to make full day kindergarten universally available. We created the TEACH project, which is now a national model to provide early educators with scholarships to obtain higher levels of education. We pioneered the nation's first comprehensive early childhood initiative, Smart Start, to improve the quality of childcare, provide access to health screenings, and offer support to families. We launched NC Pre-K to provide at-risk children with high quality learning environments. We have a lot to be proud of. At every level, local citizens, county policymakers, state leaders, organizations, and many others have taken bold action in unprecedented ways. As a result, more of our children are in high quality childcare, our pre-kindergarten program is among the best in the country. We have the highest rate of developmental screenings in the nation, and we've reduced our early grade retention rate by a third in the past decade. So now we need to ask questions for our moment. So what I want to emphasize here is we are building on what has come before us, and it's now our moment to carry it to the next place. So what would be possible if we adopted shared whole child birth date measures that put children on a pathway to grade level rating? What would be possible if we coordinated strategies to support children's optimal development beginning at birth? And what would be possible if we aligned policies and practices that were rooted in how children develop? We took those questions to a group of more than 85 representatives from the state's government agencies, nonprofit organizations, the private sector, foundations, research institutions, and members of the General Assembly. And they agreed that we needed to pursue these, the answers to these questions. And that was the launch of the NC Pathways to Grade Level Reading, an initiative of the North Carolina Early Childhood Foundation in partnership with NC Child, of the North Carolina Partnership for Children, and Best NC. Pathways is owned and driven by stakeholders, and that first 85 has now grown to more than 150. So I just want to take a moment. If you have been part of the Pathways work, you attended a stakeholder meeting, you responded to a survey, you served on the data action team or a learning team, or you had to sit and listen to me tell you why you needed to be involved in the Pathways project, Stand up for a moment. So, so first I just want to say wow. <laughs> and this, this, that was the NC Pathways to Grade Level Reading. It is bringing together people to work across systems and disciplines. It recognizes that to do a lot of great things across, that we do a lot of great things across the state and if we want to make large scale population level change, we need to be aligned in our focus and in our policies and our practices. And so I want to um, go back to somebody asked the question earlier, how are we coming together? You just saw that we are in fact coming together. Uh, Pathways begins with a shared aspirational vision 
that all North Carolina children, regardless of race, ethnicity, or socioeconomic status, are reading on grade level by the end of third grade so that they have the greatest opportunity for life success. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is just walk us through a little bit about what Pathways is and what it's doing, and then how you can become um, involved in that. So in our first phase, and when I say we, again, please remember that all those folks standing here and those who were not able to be here today, that that is the we I am referring to. Um, so we began by identifying shared measures of success, whole child birth date measures that are based on research. Everything about Pathways is rooted in research. And we got there thanks to the work of a brilliant data action team comprised of 30 experts from the state's leading universities, research institutes, government agencies, businesses and think tanks, working in concert with Pathways stakeholders. I am always amazed and share this anecdote that while we were going through this process, one of the things we did was sent out a very long list um, to stakeholders and asked them to actually prioritize it. I don't think I would have even completed it had it come to me. It was cumbersome and long, and yet 113 people went through that process. If you were one of them, thank you, because it, act, it, it fully informed the work of the data action team. So what happened? There was 100% consensus among the data action team on their recommended measures, and 95% of stakeholders responding to a survey said they felt confident that if we made progress on these measures, we would um, improve their grade rating. And this is something to celebrate. We have a framework with significant buy-in from diverse leaders. And uh, so just to share that we uh, have a professional graphic designer working on a much improved visual depiction. This is not it. Um, but I wanted to, re to, to show you at least what it looks like so that you can see the measures are interconnected, they happen within an environment and impact key literacy milestones. And as I said, anything that is on the final measures has to have a research basis that was connected to the top line result of grade level reading. And you can read more uh, on our website. So we are now wrapping up the second phase of this work that looks at how are we doing on these measures. Um, we had learning teams that work to make sense of the trends the inequities, patterns, and connections. And based on what they found, they were to answer the question, where should we move to action first? And again, I need to give a shout out to the people who really have dedicated significant amount of time to this work. So we had um, a fabulous group of co-chairs who deserve recognition. Um, they, along with 70 participants, committed to monthly meetings to really dig into the data and it wasn't easy. We don't have data for many of the measures, and oftentimes the data we have definitely leaves some things to be desired. But we could not let that paralyze us. So where are we now? They made sense of the data, they asked tough questions, and using a disparity lens, they recommended seven measures for action first. And so those were healthy birth weight, early interventions, social supports for families, positive parent-child interactions, social emotional health, high quality birth date learning environments, and regular attendance. We'll be hearing more about that in the weeks to come. On March 10th, more than 150 stakeholders have already uh, registered to help us move into the next phase. And we will uh, begin by discussing and getting stakeholder input into those measures. So they're not final until stakeholders also participate and um, provide their feedback. And then what? Then we move to action. What do we need to do to make progress on those measures? What policies and practices and programs are needed? So you'll notice this one is not checked because this is the work to come and work we hope that you all will be part of. In phase three, we will uh, be launching design teams to answer that question and to create policy, practice, and program agendas. We will at the same time host community conversations so that design team, the work of the design teams is informed by what actually happens in communities 
what works in communities, and so that communities can provide feedback on the proposed solutions. We are excited to be partnering with IEI on these community um, events. And then these agendas will serve as the as Pathways platform uh, for progress on the reporting. <laughs> Pathways will work to implement the recommendation through the state's public um, nonprofit and private sectors, and will seek the creation of a birth to eight a grade level reading task force. So just to recap, March 10th, next stakeholder meeting. I, I'm looking forward to having a huge boost in registrations tomorrow. <laughs> um, we will begin community conversations in April and then the design team's work in May. So while Pathways is about um, really vested in long-term change, it's intentional work, it's long work, it's hard work, uh, collaboration is not easy, and creating the space for collaboration is really important. Most people and organizations and agencies desperately want to do that work um, and are, I think, appreciative of having the time and space to be able to do that. Um, so while it is vested in long-term change, it doesn't mean that there's not immediate action that needs, uh, that needs to be and is being taken. So first, we're excited that the General Assembly, we know, recognizes the importance of third grade reading, as well as the need for birth to eight alignment. And we saw in the 2016, in its provisions for uh, calling on greater birth date coordination across agencies and organizations, the General Assembly specifically calls out the pathways measures of success. So we're excited. People are paying attention and, and thinking about how this can move the state forward. And second, organizations and agencies are already taking action. As a, an example, Prevent Child Abuse, North Carolina, I saw sharing somewhere, um, is aligning commu their community child abuse prevention plans with Pathways. Smart Start is aligning its accountability system with the Pathways measures. Um, the North Carolina Perinatal Health Strategic Plan is incorporating Pathways into its recommendations. <coughs> and communities um, are using the framework in their strategic planning. So movement and action is already happening. So what will you do? What will be possible if you act? So here's our starting point. One, stay informed. Sign up for updates. There's um, a bid out uh, where you'll leave your uh, name badge. If you'd like to have updates about early learning and the pathways work, leave your card or leave a piece of paper with your information. Attend the March 10th stakeholder meeting. Participate in a design team or host a community conversation. And I promise you, if you talk to any of the early learning folks in this room, they will also have lots of ways that you can stay engaged and involved um, on this very important issue. So let's come back to what this is all about. It's all about unleashing potential. When each child is given the best opportunity to realize his or her potential and contribute as a productive citizen, North Carolina prospers. In other words, the state can best realize its potential through its children. I'm going to just take one moment because I'd be remiss if I stood up here and didn't tell you anything about the North Carolina Early Childhood Foundation. Um, we work to promote understanding, spearhead collaboration, and advance policies to ensure North Carolina is on uh, each North Carolina child is on track for lifelong success by the end of third grade. And in addition to our Pathways work, we created and continue to support the first 2,000 days. We are the state lead for the campaign for grade level reading, and we published a toolkit on local financing for early learning. And you can learn more about these initiatives and other work on our website at www.buildthefoundation.org. Thank you.